Okay, this is Vicki back with Messy Table Studio, and today I'm going to show you how to make a cup or a bowl or whatever you want to call it. But this time I'm going to do it with scrapbook paper because I know I have a lot of scrapbook paper. I don't particularly like this pattern, so I think that once it's rolled up, it will look much better than this. Um, I have a, it comes from a pad that's strictly from uh, that are strictly black and white patterns and I'm getting down to the patterns that I don't necessarily always really like. Some of them I do but I wanted to pick something that I really did not like and this is the winner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, this paper and I'm going to start cutting it down into one quarter inch strips with the paper cutter. I am not going to record that part because honestly it's a waste of your time to watch me cut one quarter inch strips on a 12 by 12 piece of scrapbook paper. So what you're going to need for this project is the paper, the curling coach, the slotted uh, quilling tool, glue, and the mini mold. So I'm going, to I'm going to show you two different ways to do the bowl. One using your hands and the other one using the mini mold two different ways. Okay, so I'll be back after I've sliced up all this paper and we will get started. Okay, so here are two sheets of 12 by 12 scrapbook paper cut in one quarter inch strips. <laughs> Look, I don't think I cut it quite straight. Because I have two that are left over that will make great beads. <laughs> Alrighty. So there are two schools of thought here. You can roll it so that you see the paper on the outside, the pattern on the outside of the bowl, or you can roll it where when you look in the bowl you see the pattern and the outside of the bowl is white. I, since I put other stuff in the bowl where I need to see it, I'm going to do the pattern on the outside. So you need the curling coach and you need a slotted tool that's a little taller than this one, but this is what I got and I'm using it. All right, so you slide the paper in there and this is going to require a lot of manual dexterity to try and try and try to get that paper in there. And there we go. All right, so I'm going to crimp it on the edge. There we go. And we're starting. And if you remember from the last video I, um, I did that you don't need any glue for this except for at the very end. And remember you need to leave yourself a one inch tail. Let me go down. You need to leave yourself a one inch tail so that you can slip the other paper in between where the peg is and the tail is so that you can continue to roll. And you just roll and roll and roll and roll. And this will take a long time. And if you've cut enough paper, you will outgrow the curling coach. Especially if you want to do a larger size bowl or cup, whatever you want to call it. I call them bowls, but... All right. So, this is not the interesting part. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> The cool part comes when you start to spread the bowl, when you start to manipulate it with your fingers so that you can make it do what you want to do. Oh, that's kind of thin on the end. That one's not going to work well. And if you remember from a previous video, oh, that one's not going to work either. Um, I mentioned the fact that you're going to have a flap that flaps. I'm going to show you what happens when both flaps are flapping. So I'm rolling this in to less than an inch. I'm going to insert this, and there's one, and then there's the second flap. Flap one, flap two. And that's because I did not give this enough space to incorporate itself into the peg. So you have to give it at least an inch so that it will 
incorporate itself into rolling without having that funny look about it. And if you've cut your paper mostly straight, and evidently I did not do that, um, these will lay pretty smooth. You might have a little ripple on the top where it's not good. Make sure you don't fool around with this too much and pull and tug on it because what could happen is the paper on the inside could come undone and then you're unable to keep rolling. It's, it happens, especially if you don't pay attention. Okay. All right, so I'm going to keep rolling and keep moving forward with this. And I'll be back when I get to a point where I need to tell you what's going to happen next. Oh, there's a piece that's too tall. It's not smooth. And that also happens when you hand cut your own paper. Whoops. When you hand cut your own paper is that your paper is not always cut as evenly in strips. You think you're doing it evenly, but then when you go to look at it, you can see that this end is thinner than this end. You see that difference? That's from hand cutting your paper. Also those little plastic machines where you put the whole sheet into it and then you crank it, that paper doesn't always come out as cool as you think it's going to either. I've tried it and for the life of me, I just don't get the results that I see people get on YouTube videos. And I also tried cutting paper on a pasta maker, which... <laughs> That, oh, that was horrible, horrible. It did not go well. All right, I'm going to see it's starting to slip now. My, my thing, my quilling tool is starting to slip, and it's getting harder and harder to roll this because this is wanting to slip out. And I haven't even gotten to the first black ring on here yet. Have I? Oh, yep, I'm on the second black ring. Second ring. Let's see if this works. You don't want it wound so tight if you're going to make a bowl because you need to spread the layers of paper as you make the bowl and you don't want them so tight that they don't spread out. All right, so I'm going to fast forward through this or I'm just going to cut it out and just keep going and come back when I have it to the outer edge of the um, quilling coat, curling coach. I'll be back. Okay, as I predicted, this has come undone. So now we have to resort to hand rolling the paper because it is not working. So evidently I did not have enough folded over on the other side to where it would work. So this this still works this way where you insert it in and you just keep rolling. And yes, you will have the flap, but if you roll it like this, you don't see it as often as when you see it on the curling coach. Curling coach is good to get you started, but it's mainly for smaller discs, not for what I'm trying to do. Um, I have done a curling coach made out of cardboard, a round piece of cardboard, and I did poke a hole in it and poke this through it. I have to tell you, it wasn't the brightest idea I had, but it also wasn't the worst. It did work. It was a little bit of a challenge, but it does work. Now, some people like to glue their strips to end to end to each other, but I don't want to use that kind of glue on here because... I want this to spread and if any of the glue sticks from later layer then when you go to spread the paper out it's going to catch on that glued section and you don't want that. So you still get that little flappy deal and because I let go of it it's going to flap up. There we go. And here's the other one. Okay. Alright so I will go and roll this until I run out of paper and then I'll be right back. 
Okay, so I've rolled as far as I want to roll without having to do some extra gluing that I really don't want to do. This is the amount of paper that's left. Some of them are not quite the same width on the end, so I set those aside, but I still have a lot left. This is where I'm going to stop, though. I'm going to glue the end. And I'm really going to go back about an inch or more. Come on. And I'm going to glue it and then hold it for a couple of seconds because this is a lot of paper to come unraveled and honestly I don't want to have to re-roll it. So I'm going to make sure it's nice and snug and leave it in my hand for a few seconds and then um, check to see if it's going to stay there. And you see it has a little play to it. If I wound it a little looser, I could make it into the shape of a heart, a square, a triangle, an oval. Right, I'm going to put it down here and make sure it's flat. And I'm going to show you. This is the curling coach and this is the disc. I went a little past where the curling coach is, or almost even with it, maybe one or two rounds past the curling coach. Probably could have kept going, but I think this is big enough. All right, so I've seen this done one of two ways. I know which way I prefer it, but I'm going to tell you both ways. You can take glue and spread it on here as you push out on it, or you can push out on it and glue afterwards. Because I'm going to show you two different ways to do this, I don't want to glue it quite yet. All right, remember this, the mini mold? We're going to try this. I don't know if this is going to work with this big of a disc. I don't think we're going to get much of a mold, but it'll get us started. All right, so you're going to take this, and you're going to put it on top of the biggest bump because, you know, this is like this. And then you're going to gently let it kind of fold or mold around You don't want to push too hard because you don't want your layers to separate and they're starting to separate because this is not perfectly cut paper. And I think this disc is too large for this mold. Yep. I should have made it a little bit smaller to do this. Anyway, if you cut this the right size, you should be able to just kind of go down over it and it makes a great cup, like the perfect cup, perfect bowl. All right, because I'm not, I can't do it that way with this one. I'm going to do it with my fingers. And remember, I told you that dirty work is part of one of the problems that people face when they're quilling. So I don't want to put glue in it yet. I will save the glue at the end to when I'm done fussing around with it. All right, so this is very tricky and it may spring and then I'll have to re-roll it. But if I'm lucky, it won't do that. All right, so the whole point is, is learning to use pressure. Pressure from the top, pressure on the bottom. So you bend in and smoothly and carefully go around as you apply pressure on both sides. And because this is only quarter inch paper, you cannot, pre you cannot spread it out that far. If you used half inch paper, you could spread it a little further and it'll make a deeper bowl. You just kind of go around and the paper kind of spreads out on its own as you pull, you pull back a little bit from the top and push in with your thumbs. So you push in with your thumbs and spread with your fingers. But you can't spread it too far because if you get the layers too far apart, then it'll go bing. So that's what you get when you do it that way. You can make this go up higher, make it more pointy. You can push it in by laying it on a flat surface and then rolling your finger around on the bottom to form a flat bottom. Like that. And then if you want to leave this flat, you can continue to move 
the top up a little bit. Just push and pull at the same time gently and this requires a lot of patience. All right, when you get the bowl to the size you want it to be, put it on the flat surface and make sure that the bottom ring is flat on the board. Now you can leave a lip on it where you push this back up and you get a lip. Can you see that? You get, all right, focus, silly thing. You get a lip. So you have a lip around here still looks good on the inside the bottom's still flat now sometimes things get a little wonky but you lay it down again and make sure that the top of the bowl is flat and the bottom of the bowl is flat so you just kind of mash around with your fingers alright so you can make it more shallow by pushing down on the bottom and working around with your thumbs. You can apply pressure from both sides. Push and pull at the same time. And then you have a more shallow bowl. Or you can go like this and start all over. <laughs> but don't do it too many times because paper has a fatigue point where it can't take it anymore and it's over. All right, so let's try this again. So you can make it wonky. Like that to where it tilts to one side. And if you have enough paper in here, you can take the end of this tool or one that's a little more pointy. I don't want to use this because I know I'm going to spring it. Take your little finger and push to where you can make it a little more pointy and it's still wonky. Or then you can push up on the other wonky side. This would be more for like a lid than a bottom. This is more of a top than anything else. And then you put it down and Make sure when you look at it that it's it's even if you want it even. All right, so this is the last time I'm doing that one. <laughs> so I'm going to make me a little bowl. You push down with, you pull down with this hand with both sides and then push in with your thumb. So you're just doing it a little at a time. There's no rush. And if you rush, you will make a mistake, and then you'll have to redo it. You don't want to rush. When you do colors, sometimes you'll have color and it'll be like that. It won't be completely, it'll look a little weird. Uneven is the word I'm looking for, I guess. I want this to be more shallow and a little taller on the sides. And it's a little wonky. So back to the bottom we go. Sometimes you can make your bowl lean over like that and you're like, well, it looks good. And then you hold it up and you're like, oh, no, I don't think so. It happens. And then just play around with it gently until you come to the place where you're really happy with it. And there's the bowl. So now I will take this because this squeezes out much faster than the other stuff. You can use a matte medium of some sort, whatever you want, or glossy mediums, whatever you want. I just kind of smooth the glue in there with my fingers. Like I said, they're your best quilling tools. And don't mash too hard. See, I already mashed a little too hard. You can use a mm -mm -mm. you can use a paintbrush and do it. 
You can use polyacrylic if you don't want to use glue. You can use a polyacrylic. I do a 50-50. 50% water and 50% polyacrylic seal on my stuff now because Mod Podge where I live is called a sticky mess. Just want to make sure the bottom of the bowl looks more even. Stick that in there a little deeper. This is why I glue once I get finished because I'll play around with it until it pops because sometimes you just don't know when to quit. <laughs> All right, so this glue for me is too thick to work with, so I'm going to go back to this. Yes, this takes a long time to come through that needle, but it's not as sticky to work with. Tacky glue is great, but for me, it's too much for this kind of project. All right, then you let it dry. I put some up here around the edge because I want to make sure that's going to not come unraveled. I will not be a happy camper if it does. All right, so there's the glue on it. Now you sit and wait. And there you have a basic cup or a basic bowl. And then if you want a lid, you do the exact same thing you did to this, only you need to make it either, you can make it a little smaller so it sits inside the bowl, just inside the rim, and you will have to stop and lay the, the um, the coil or the peg, whatever you want to call it, pegs are the small ones, but the big ones, you'll have to lay it in here to kind of look at it to see if it'll fit inside the bowl. And remember, when you go up, you're making a lid. You're not flattening it on the bottom unless you want a flat lid. Then if you um, want a lid that goes over this, you will have to make your disc larger than this, the outside, and you will have to mold it a little bit and try it on. And then if it doesn't, if it's not wide enough, then you'll have to flatten it and add more paper to it, a couple more rounds, usually is all it takes, and then put the disc over it again and kind of push the edges down over this edge to see if it will go over the edge of the bowl. And then you can do whatever you want. All right, so I'm going to come back and show you some of the stuff I've done in the past so you understand the possibilities of doing this. Okay, now for show and tell and what the possibilities can be. This is a 20 by 24 map of North America that were cut into, I think, are these one quarter inch strips? Yep, these are one quarter inch strips. And this was done with the curling coach in the beginning, and as it got bigger and bigger and bigger, I had to lay it flat on here and spin it around with my hand while rolling it around because it just was too large. So because the paper was cut inconsistently, I don't know if you can see it, there are ridges inside here where the paper was too tall for what I did. But there's a bowl. It's bigger than you think it is. You can put a thermal cup in there. <laughs> All right, so there's this one. I have a map of Russia and I have a map of Canada that are done just like this. Then I saw a woman from, and I think she's from Spain, who is a fabulous artist about these paper bowls. And she showed what she made hers out of, and then I was on the hunt. So here is my large bowl. And yes, it's very shiny. I made the mistake of using shiny Mod Podge. This is made out of confetti, confetti paper. At the Party City where I lived in Virginia Beach, there was a store not too far from me. And I went over there and I found, I did not find exactly what she used because she was in a foreign country, but I came close to it. Um, they were long streamers, and they are cut in one-quarter inch strips, just like I did these papers because I measured them, 
and they're about one quarter inch. They came in long rolls and you had to unroll them. And it was a mess and it was time. I think I spent more time trying to unroll that stuff than I did actually making the bowl because they were done in um, colors, sections of colors. So I wanted to separate my colors and I spent a lot of time separating all the different colors and then ended up combining them a little at a time. This bowl is seven years old. And because I use Mod's Mod Podge, it succumbs to heat and it does not do well. So I will never use Mod Podge on any of my stuff ever again. So the best thing to use on your stuff is the 50-50 uh, mix of polyacrylic Minwax. I got that idea from Shannon Green. Never regretted changing from Mod Podge to Minwax. I really do like it. It's acrylic, water soluble, the best stuff. All right, so then um, I made this. This is from Confetti Paper. It's got a few little dings in it, but still love it. I love these bowls. When I made bowls, because it was so hard to keep track of which lid went with which bowl, I tried to make the lip yellow here on this one and also make the lip on this one yellow too, so I know, I knew that these two go together. I have not put a handle on it or a knob or anything. And this is basically a domed, um, a domed one, and it's one of the first ones that I made. And I made the mistake of stopping with the red and then having to add the yellow on it. When I went to smooth it down, the yellow buckled. And I had this big, huge honking ridge around here. And I don't necessarily like it, but I learned something from it. And that's all that really matters. So you can see the inside. See all that? That's where it buckled. I inserted another bowl inside the yellow ring. So this is a red bowl that I inserted into the yellow one. And there it is right there. So I, I like this bowl. It's kind of a shallow bowl. It's definitely different. And you could turn it that way, but see, it wobbles. So it's, it's meant to be this way. There you go. So there's that one. And I really like the lids that fit on the inside of the container. So then I made this one, and this is a very tall vase, whoops, a very tall vase one. I like the tall vases. Something different besides the short squatty bowl like this, you know, it's, it's very different. And then I made the lid, again, the yellow with the yellow, so I could remember which lid goes where. And it sits inside. Remember I told you, once you do the disc, you keep putting it inside your bowl. Do the bottom first, then do the lid so that you can make sure you make the lid fit inside or on the outside perfectly for the bowl it's going to be on. I um, saw how the woman made a, um, I don't know what you call it, a knob for the top of the, the lid just by doing one of the tiny disc and then pushing it out. I think what I used to push out the, to make it this way is this. The, remember I told you you can take it and then you can push in and it makes it, I'll show you. Anyway, so I made a little knob and then I glued it on here. And there is my little knob to open up this. And this is, larger than this. I love this one. All right, so let's see. All right, here's another one. Here's the bottom of the bowl. The insides of the paper were not that sometimes the printing of the paper was not perfect and there's a blue strip on the red. So the insides sometimes their colors are different than what you see on the outside. So it's red on the outside, but there's a million different colors on the inside because it, the colors weren't cut properly. Who cares? It was confetti, you know, string confetti. Well, then this was cut better. I took the better pieces 
You can see all the lovely stripes in it. And here's the one where I took the tool and started poking it up through there while it was glue. I put glue on it because I knew that if I poked too much, it was going to go boing. So I glued the inside first, or the upper part, I put glue in there first with my finger and a tool. Then I started pushing it up so that I could get... It's not pointed, but it's more pointed than some of the others. So this is how it looks. And I, this is one of the beginning ones, so I did not match this to this, except for that little blue stripe right there. And there is the lid for this one. I didn't do a, very good with the color choices. Then I did this one, where it's a very simple little bowl. These two are almost the same size, not quite. And this, I think this was one of the first ones that I did because it's so small. The bottom is looks normal and is so small. Then I did the lid, and I remembered that I had to make the lid. I wanted the lid to go over there, so I had to keep stopping and putting the disc over it. And it doesn't fit perfectly, but it sits on there good enough. I wanted it to kind of look like a mushroom. There it is. And then let me show you sideways there. Isn't that cool? So there are so many possibilities to doing this. If you can master making these little bowls like this, you can do all of these with time and patience. All of these were made using the same, whoops, the same basic concept like what I just showed you. It is not impossible to do. It does take a little bit of practice, I'm not going to lie. I had stuff spring out and I had to start all over a few times. But it is possible you can make this into those. You can use scrapbook paper. I mean, it does have a little design in it, not a lot. You can paint the inside black. I have bowls that I painted on the inside or I put paper napkins on the inside. You can do a bazillion things with this. And you're only limited by your imagination and your own creativity. Don't let it stop you just because it's scrapbook paper. You know, just keep going and going and going. All right, so that's it for how to make a bowl. Let me just add one more thing. The way that I learned how to do these bowls is by buying a kit from Quilt Creations. Let me let me get the booklet out of there. Okay, I wanted to learn how to make the bowls, so the first thing I did was I ordered the cupcake kit from Quilt Creations, and that's where I learned to make the little bowls. They send you all the paper you need to make, like, uh, how many cupcakes? I think there's... Oh. I think there's, let's see, two, four, there's six cupcakes. They send you the paper to make six cupcakes. And they give you their directions with photos. They tell you the supplies that you need. And I learned how to make the bowls using this step-by-step -step guide. There was no YouTube when I learned how to do this. Or YouTube was not as advanced as it is. They call that when your coil comes in a popped coil. That's like horror to me. <laughs> then they explain about spirals and different quilling shapes, how to make your cupcakes. Each one has its own little page for how to make the cupcake and to decorate the top of it, the topping, and how to make this one a little slanted and wonky. And then on the back it showed, I saw this one with the sunflower. I was like, oh, I've got to have that. So then, I ordered, bun, 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 where is it? Did I get, where's my kit? E -e 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 -e. I ordered the sunflower. And then I ordered, then I ordered this one. Cause I wanted to learn how to do this across here. And I wanted to learn how to do 3D figures, which I did do cause I've made many since then. And let's see. Quilling beginner kits. You can buy things like that. I think this came with my box that I bought. 
Yeah, beginner quilling kit. Then I did the things that were cutesy, like the sweet treats. I did angels, and I made a ton of these angels. And then I learned how to make birds. I learned how to make a snowman and snowflakes. As long as you learn the basic shapes, you can do anything. It's like knitting. There's two stitches, knit and purl. Once you master that, everything else is icing on the cake. Then I decided I had to make the Santa Claus. I loved it, and I liked the wreath. So I ordered this kit. Uh, let's see. Then I did another Christmas kit. I like kits because I did not have to buy any extra paper. Here is the flat and you know what? I've never, I don't think I've even used this kit. <gasps> I have not. All the paper and the instructions are still in there. <laughs> this is the bakery kit because this is the ones that's flat. You can glue down flat. I wanted 3D. I wanted to be able to pick it, touch it, and move it around. I like stuff that is visually interesting. I don't always like stuff that's flat. So the flat kind of quilling is really not my thing. I'm more into this kind of stuff where I can hold it and touch it and look at it from all the sides. This, you look at the front, you look at the back, you're done. Okay, so not all my kits came from Quill Creations. All right, there's one more. That was how to do um, snowflakes. This one just about killed me. I found this one to be the hardest one out of all of them was this one. Although I did master it, but man, a shebbets, that was hard. All right, so then I ordered, what's this one? This one is Lake City Craft Company, and this one had quilled earrings, and I did a couple of them, and I wore them. I couldn't feel I had the earrings on, and I didn't like it. Although it does teach you useful skills for other things, you don't have to make earrings out of what you make. You can make flowers of them, but then again, I'm not the flat glue it on a board sort of person. I like the... Um, the 3D texture of stuff. And then this last one is also Lake City Craft Company where you did flower, where you do flowers. And I bet you, oh, <laughs> guess what? I didn't do this one either. So I've got two of them I haven't done. All right, so that's it. I suggest if you're new, you start with very basic things, very basic kits for a cup. And I would re highly recommend the cupcake kit from Quilled Creations because this one has all you need to make this except for you know you need to have your slotted tool your needle tool the curling coach the mini mold circle sizer the ruler uh, fine tip tweezers craft glue and scissors those are things that you probably already have in a kit that you've bought somewhere else and then all you need is this because this supplies the instructions in the paper so I thought these were very cool ways for me to learn how to make things and I have made thousands of these I mean, I have, oh, I can't tell you how many of these things I have made. A bazillion of them. They're just very cool. All right, so I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.